for Nick Carter, Master Detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Tonight's curious adventure, The Drums of Death, or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the White Witch Doctor. And so, gentlemen, you will find enclosed a complete dossier on the criminal in question, plus all the evidence needed for a conviction. Yours very truly, etc., etc. Et wait a minute, wait a minute, Nick, not so fast. Uh, yours very truly. Okay, what now? Well, what else do we have to take care of, Patsy? The only unfinished business I know of right now is this bunch of letters from that Mrs. Galley. Oh, yes. What was it this Mrs. Galley wanted me to do? She's worried about her doctor, Nick, and she wants to consult you. No, let her consult another doctor if she doesn't like the one she's got now. Throw her letters out, Patsy. Let's go celebrate having our old business all cleaned up. Well, I would, Nick, except that the letter we got from her today throws a new light on her problem. Oh, what did she have to say today that was so vital? She says she's afraid of her doctor. Afraid of him? Oh, hum. Uh, Mrs. Galley's that old, wealthy dowager I met at somebody's tea a few weeks ago, isn't she? That's who she is, and she... Uh, she's probably a crotchety old hypochondriac whose hobby is doctors. That isn't it. And now that she's seen every physician in town, she wants to start in collecting detectives. <laughs> does she say why she's afraid of whatever doctor she's going to now? Yes, she does, Nick. She says he's... he's a witch doctor. <laughs> It was very kind of you to come, Mr. Carter. I hoped you would. I confess I wasn't too eager, Mrs. Galley, until Miss Bowen told me about your last letter. I... Well, perhaps it's silly to believe in such things as voodoo and black magic nowadays, but I don't know what to say. Suppose you tell your story and let me be the judge. Well, there isn't much to tell, Mr. Carter. I was... <gasps> What's that? Only the wind, Mrs. Galley. It's nothing. Oh... <sighs> I'm so unnerved. Well, here's my story. Last week, my nephew, Walter Galley, told me about a wonderful new doctor he discovered, a Dr. Congo. I wasn't feeling well, and the name interested me, so I went to see him. Good morning. Is Dr. Congo in? Good morning, madam. Yes, the doctor is in. Can't say I remember a doctor's office in Vanderbilt Square before. You're new here, aren't you? Have you come to see Dr. Congo, madam? Naturally. Do I look like an insurance salesman? Have you an appointment, Mrs... Uh... Galley is the name. Mrs. Galley. My nephew made an appointment for me. Oh, yes, Mrs. Galley. Will you step this way, please? Dr. Congo's expecting you. Thank you. Wait a moment. What's that noise? Drums, madam. Drums? What Drums? If you'll step inside, Mrs. Galley, you'll find out for yourself. Very well. Drums, indeed. What nonsense is this? Good morning, Mrs. Galley, I presume. I'm Dr. Congo. Good morning, Dr. Congo. I want... <laughs> Golly, what a story. Go on, Mrs. Galley. Why did you scream? Because I saw... I saw... Yes, what did you see? A white savage. What? From his neck to his toes, Dr. Congo was an ordinary man. He was wearing striped trousers, formal cutaway jacket, wing collar, ascot tie. He was beautifully dressed. But his face... Yes? His face was hideous. Shaven skull. A horrid, grinning mouth showing his teeth, which had all been filed to a point. And he had a bone through his nose. Like a cannibal? Yes. At first I was stunned. And then, then I thought it might be a joke my nephew Walter was playing on me. I sat down while the drums throbbed. 
I'm sorry I screamed, Dr. Congo, but you gave me quite a start. I usually do that to my clients, Mrs. Galley. Uh, what kind of a doctor are you? A witch doctor. You're fooling, aren't you? On the contrary. But it, it's unbelievable. We only joke about things like witchcraft nowadays. I am not joking, Mrs. Galley. I've spent 15 years in the heart of Africa studying voodoo. My face, the drums, the African witchcraft apparatus in this room, all are a necessary part of my profession. Profession? Yes. I am a professional witch doctor. And as such, can guarantee miracles that modern medicine would never dream of. Ridiculous. I don't believe you. Really? Oye, Kahara. Oye, Kahara, home. Pardon me, Mrs. Galley. I was just ordering my men to begin the voodoo drum incantation. None of my clients believed me at first, Mrs. Galley, but I convinced them. Now, if you'll allow me... What are you doing with those scissors? I merely removed a lock of your hair. Now, in spite of yourself, you are officially one of my patients. And I warn you, my fee is high. Well, you're wasting your time, sir. I don't want to be a patient of yours, and I won't pay any fee. I'm leaving. Good day, sir. One moment, Mrs. Galley. Dr. Congo, let go of my arm. You don't understand me, Mrs. Galley, and I'm afraid you don't understand voodoo. This lock of your hair places your health in my hands. Your life or death are mine to do with as I desire. And my fee for this visit is $10,000. Preposterous! Get out of my way! $10,000, Mrs. Galley. Now listen closely. Three times you will hear my Congo drums roll, no matter where you are. If you have not paid when you hear them for the third time, you will die. Good morning, Mrs. Galley. Then, Mr. Carter, I ran out of that office. I... I'm 65 and not as strong as I was, but I was frightened. I realized he was threatening to kill me with voodoo. And we don't believe in that nowadays, do we? Not as a rule. Three drum rolls, he told me. And if I don't pay by the third one, I die. Stuff and nonsense, I said. And then, that very night, when I was alone in this room, I heard the distant roll of Congo drum. God. Now, Mrs. Galley, you must calm yourself. I'm sure it's only your nerves. We don't believe in witchcraft today. You've got to believe me, Mr. Carter. I've already heard Dr. Congo's drums beat once. Perhaps you only think you did, Mrs. Galley. This Dr. Congo is playing on your nerves. Hysteria can make us think we hear anything. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sure I heard them. I'm just... Wait. That is... You heard Nick. That wasn't Mrs. Galley's imagination. I heard it, too. And so did I, Patsy. That's the second time. It's not just my nerves. You must save me from Dr. Congo, Mr. Carter. If you can't, I'm lost. This voodoo will kill me. Help me. Help me. Mrs. Galley, you mustn't let this get you. I never believed in witchcraft before, but I do now. <laughs> what a joke on me. Mrs. Galley, please. Please, I beg you. Mrs. Galley. What a joke on me, voodoo. Witchcraft. Slap her face, Pat. What? Quick. Snap her out of this. Okay, you say so. Mrs. Galley. Listen to me. I'll take over this case, so don't worry. Now, where can I find your nephew? Walter. He's usually in the bubble bar cafe at this hour. Oh, Mr. Carter, if that Dr. Congo gets me, I... I... Nick, she's fainted. Call her maid and tell her to put her to bed. We've got to get out of here. You go back to the office. I'm going to look for Mrs. Galley's nephew. But, Nick, what about Dr. Congo? Isn't he the one you want to see? No. I have a hunch this case hinges on Walter Galley. Yeah, this Baba Bar Cafe is a pretty tough-looking dive for a place with such a fancy name. Nobody here but the bartender and that piano player. Well, it must be too early in the evening. Good evening. Hiya, pal. Well, it be. Information. Huh? I'm looking for someone. Who? Walter Galley. Oh, him. Walter ain't come in yet. Hang around. He's due any minute. 
You live around here? Yeah, across the street. River Apartments. I see. He owes you money, too, huh? How's that? <laughs> Don't play dumb, pal. Golly's clipped us all. Somebody's always coming around looking for him. Pal, I'd give plenty to get back what he owes me. He's no good. How's chances of collecting? Zero, pal. Zero. Yali claims he's got a rich old aunt who's going to leave him plenty when she kicks off, but I don't... For the lover. What is it? What's the matter, man? Turn around and look. Hmm? Oh. Good evening, Mr. Carter. Ah, Dr. Congo, I presume? Quite right. What's that thing he's got for a face? Don't you find it inconvenient walking around wearing a bone through your nose, Dr. Congo? No, Mr. Carter, I don't. It's my business. And what's your business with me? You see this African spear I'm carrying? Yes. I'm going to present it to you. And why? Merely as a warning, my impulsive friend. A warning? Yes, a warning. Keep away from Walter Galley and his aunt. Or the next time my drums roll, they'll beat for your death. My dear witch, Doctor. Then, just to punctuate my warning, here's the present I promised you. Take it, Doc! He just missed you with that spear, mister. Keep it for a souvenir, bartender. I'm going after that man. Hey, Dr. Congo! Dr. Congo! <laughs> Look down that side street. The Congo thinks he can scare me off with that voodoo nonsense. Congo! Congo! Now he's cutting across the street. Up. Well, let's see if he can outrun me. Hey, hey, look out! Watch me, friend! Are you all right? Oh. Nick. Oh, what happened, huh? Oh, yes, yes, I remember it now. Oh, is that you, Patsy? It's me, all right. Oh, that was close. Well, what happened? I got here just as that car almost ran you down. Well, whoever it was, he tried his best to get rid of me. But why? Probably because I was chasing Dr. Congo. Dr. Congo? Yes. He paid me a visit when I was looking for Walter Galley. At the Bubble Bar Cafe? Yes. Congo threw an African spear at me. I chased him out to the street. Good heavens. Probably had an accomplice waiting with a car for just such an emergency. Oh, Nick, they might have killed you. Well, they certainly tried hard enough. Must have jumped a mile trying to dodge that car. Nick, listen. I came down here looking for you. What's happened? Mrs. Galley's maid phoned the office just as I got there. She was hysterical. She could hardly talk. What happened, Patsy? Mrs. Galley has vanished. <laughs> Glad you can. Mrs. Galley has disappeared. How do you mean, Mrs. Galley's disappeared? She was spirited away, monsieur, by witchcraft. It's horrible. She has simply vanished. When did you see Mrs. Galley last? After you leave, I put her to bed. She has the hysteria, you remember? Yes, I remember. She does not rest. She cannot sleep. She screams and laughs, so I, I tell her I will get her the off me. And? I'm in the kitchen. When I hear her scream upstairs, and then of a sudden... She does not scream. She is, are you say, cut off. I enter the bedroom and... And what? You must look for yourself, monsieur. I do not go into this room again. All right, all right. Where is it? I know. Come on. Okay. Oh, Nick, do you really think Dr. Congo made Mrs. Galley vanish? I don't know what to think yet. But those voodoo drums. We heard them when we were here before. Yes, we heard them. Is this the bedroom? Yes. Mm -hmm. The room looks all right. Nothing upset. No sign of a struggle. Nick. What? Look, on the bed. The bed? Oh. What is it, Nick? It looks like dust. Dust forming the outline of a human figure. Oh. If there's any truth in voodoo, Patsy. That's what's left of Mrs. Galley. Oh, Nick, this is awful. Now, steady, Patsy, steady. But, but this must be real witchcraft, Nick. No human agency could do this to Mrs. Galley. <gasps> the drum. The Congo drum. Oh, let's get out of here. If I hear those drums again, I'll scream. They're you, horrible. You better get ready to hear plenty more, Patsy. Right now, we're going to pay a visit to Dr. Congo. And this is Vanderbilt Square, Patsy. Look for Dr. Congo's sign. Do we have to come here, Nick? We do, Patsy. I want to have a look at Dr. Congo's office. Uh, nice old residential section. It's awfully dark. Yeah. 
There's no lights in the houses anywhere. Nick, there it is. The doctor sign? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Congo, W-D. Oh, probably stands for witch doctor. All right, Patsy, come on. Oh, Nick, I'm scared. Oh, certainly you don't believe in voodoo, Patsy. Oh, I never did before, but Dr. Congo seems to have changed my mind, maybe. Would you, would you rather wait in the car? What? Desert you? I may be scared, but I'm no coward. Oh, that's the girl, Patsy. Chin up. Oh, I'm trying, but it makes my teeth chatter too loud. <laughs> well, here we are. A nice side window. Going to have a peek inside? No, going to break in. What's that? Just a gadget, Patsy, for unlocking locked windows. Oh, yeah. Now we turn the catch, and there we are. I'll go first, Patsy. Okay. All right. Let me give you a hand, Patsy. All right. Up. See, Patsy. And here we are, in the den of the witch doctor. What are you looking for? Any clues that'll help us. I'd rather do it by daylight, but this flashlight will have to serve. Hurry up, Nick. I want to get out of here. Sorry to interrupt. Mr. Carter again, I believe. Just paying a friendly call, Dr. Congo. Interested in Mrs. Galley's unfortunate disappearance, eh? You know about that, huh? Naturally. My voodoo did it. Mrs. Galley was too stubborn to pay the fee she owed me. I would advise you to raise your hands, Mr. Carter. Ah, you see, the young lady understands. The native archer is eager to shoot. He'll not miss next time. What do you want, Congo? I thought it was obvious. Money. And I'm going to get it in spite of you. Because unfortunately, you're helpless, Carter. You cannot fight my voodoo. And no law court will convict me of murder by witchcraft. The police will laugh at your evidence. At my evidence? I wonder. You can wonder on your way home, Mr. Carter. This way out. And let me warn you never to return. Or you'll not go out alive. Come on, Nick. One last word. I've already spoken to Walter Galley on the phone. He refuses to pay the money his aunt owed me. Walter has no money. Ah, but he can raise plenty at a moment's notice on the inheritance he'll receive. Now that his aunt is dead. That's true, if his aunt is dead. You had better use your influence on him, if you have any, and persuade him to pay before it's too late. Another threat, Dr. Congo? Listen, Mr. Carter. I do not make empty threats. You've already seen the power of my voodoo in the case of Mrs. Gailey. And I'm not joking now. My black magic is already cutting away Walter Gailey's life. Unless he agrees to pay what I ask in a very short time, he too will rot to dust. Good night, Mr. Carter. Nick, I, I can't believe it. He let us go alive. Yes, Patsy. This time, Congo overplayed his hand. And I believe a visit to Walter Gailey's apartment will prove it. Mr. Galley. Mr. Galley. Mr. Galley. No one home. Then we'll just go in and wait. This looks like an easy lock for the moment. I'm almost afraid to go in. Well, too late, Patsy. We're in already. Come on. Radio plane. All the lights are on. We must have just stepped out for a moment. Yes, looks that way. What do you think? Do Dr. Congress press, I mean. Let's look around. Well, wait a minute. Turn off that radio. Yeah, that's better. I wonder where Galley is. Maybe he went to pay that money to Dr. Congo. Perhaps, but I doubt it. Nick, look. What is it, Betty? Look at that couch beside the radio. It, it's covered with... Dust. Yes, I see. It's shaped like a human figure. Exactly like the dust on Mrs. Galley's bed. And Congo's killed Walter Galley, too. The evidence seems to point that way. But how can Congo do this, Nick? By voodoo. So Congo says, beat a few drums, melt a wax figure, and your victim rots to dust. And there's the dust on the couch. Then you believe it, too. I didn't say that, Betsy. Listen. The drum again. Oh, Nick, let's drop this case. We can't fight the supernatural. We don't understand it. it it's like trying to stop the wind. Trying to stop the wind? Of course, Patsy. That's the one last explanation I was looking for. I should have thought of that myself. What? I mean this case is solved. Give me a moment to write a note here at Galley's desk. A note? To whom? Why, to Dr. Congo. My dear 
Dr. Congo. You are right. I have no case for the police. I have just discovered that both your victims committed suicide. Signed, Nick Carter. That's a peculiar note. What does it mean? Dr. Congo will understand it. But, Nick, it couldn't be suicide. But Mrs. Galley and Walter vanished. No bodies were found. Dr. Congo will understand what it means, Patsy. Oh, Nick, you're just deliberately mystifying me. No, Patsy, you'll understand, too, later. But right now, I want you to deliver this note to Mrs. Galley's maid. Her maid? Well, did she... No questions now. Deliver it and hurry back to the office. Because very shortly, we're going to hear Dr. Congo's drums beating again. And this time, they'll be beating for us. Over here, Patsy. You delivered the note? Yes. What in the world are you doing? Just setting up my motion picture projector. Oh, Nick, this is no time for movies. The police were at Mrs. Galley's. News about her disappearance is getting around. Well, I understand the whole social set's going crazy. That's exactly what Congo wants. If you fail on this case, Nick, everyone will be afraid not to pay Congo. As I said, that's exactly what Congo wants. Said he was after money, didn't he? Well, who do you think Congo will attack next? The drum. Congo's drum. There's your answer, Patsy. You mean he's after us? Exactly. I know it got a quicker response than I thought it would. Patsy, put out the lights quick. Now what? Now the projector. There. You see? I've got it set in the shade. Why, that's wonderful. It makes it look as if we were standing in front of the window talking. Those shadows on the curtain look as natural as light. Right. Now, get over to the side of the room. Now, wait from in front of the window. But... No buts. Follow instructions. We're playing against a killer, Patsy. You mean Congo? Get down on the floor. Lay flat. I wish you... Quiet. What am I supposed to do here? Wait. And when you hear shots, scream. Scream? You heard me. But who's going to do the shooting? Our old friend. Ah! Nick, are you all right? Quiet. Everything's all right. All they shot was the movie projector. In about ten seconds now, they'll be coming in here to check up on the results. Nick, did you say they? Now listen. Just as soon as you hear the door slam, turn on the lights. But Nick... Don't argue, Patsy. Okay. Now, quiet. Yeah, that apparently took care of them. Yes, I think that we've accomplished... Don't go, be of you. Lights, Patsy. Okay. Now, as you see, you're covered with this gun I hold in my hand. Nick Carter, I told you, Walter, he was... Shut up, put up that Tommy gun you have there laid on the table, Dr. Congo. But, Nick, that's Mrs. Galley. I thought she was dead. That's what you were supposed to think, Patsy. And the chap with her is her nephew, Walter. But I don't understand, Nick. Very simple, Patsy. This clever pair created Dr. Congo, a phony witch doctor played by Walter Galley. Their motive? Blackmail. And they pretended to be their own first two victims. I see. So they could disappear and then spend their entire time playing Dr. Congo. And also so that their fates would terrify future victims into paying Dr. Congo's exorbitant fees without any protest. You are indeed clever, Mr. Carter. Very clever. Then all that voodoo was make-believe. Phony. Yes, Patsy. As phony as the shadows on our window shade, which this precious pair attacked. And as phony as the make makeup that turned Walter into a witch doctor. That's why I wrote that note, Patsy, about having learned that both disappearances were really suicides. They knew then that I'd seen through their whole scheme. But those mysterious drumbeats we heard, e even outside our own window. Let me show you how that was done. Oh, let's see. Oh, yes, yes. Here it is. You see, Patsy? A simple gadget attached to the outer frame. A windmill connected to a small drum. Mm -hmm. When the wind blows hard enough, the drum beats. Watch. I'll spin it. Oh, so that's what scared me. That plus your imagination. It was imagination you two counted on most, wasn't it, Dr. Congo? Ah. You concocted the voodoo tale, planted your own clues, and then vanished. The rest you left to human nature, right? Ben? So why did they call you in, Nick? Why didn't they let well enough alone? They were playing for high stakes, Patsy. They thought they had a perfect racket. And if I failed to break it, their victims wouldn't fight back. But the phony Dr. Congo was far too eager to let us escape. That was the second important clue. The second? What was the first? Mrs. Galley claimed she was in Congo's power because he'd cut off a lock of her hair, remember? Yes, but isn't that according to voodoo tradition? Certainly. But it couldn't work with Mrs. Galley. Well, why not? No, Patsy, you disappoint me. Look at Mrs. Galley now. You're close enough. I see. Mrs. Galley wears a wig. Of course, Patsy. And a lock of hair cut from a wig would hardly put the wearer of the wig under the spell of even the best witch doctor in the world. Well, for the love of... Look here, Carter. 
We can't stand here all night with our hands in the air like this. No. What are you going to do with oh, us? Oh, sorry to treat you two this way. But I don't like visitors who bring Tommy guns to my office. I was a fool to let you go when I had you in my office, Carter. You were all kinds of a fool, Galley. Or do you prefer to be called Dr. Congo? Ah. If you hadn't been in such a hurry, your plans might not have been quite so apparent. And if you hadn't been so obvious in sending me to see Walter Galley in the middle of the night when he hadn't had time to raise the money to pay you, even if you wanted to, I shouldn't have been quite so sure what your schemes were. Your eagerness to begin collecting from your victims was your downfall, my friend. All right. But the next That's time... That's what they all say, my friend. But there won't be any next time. Nick Carter plays for keeps. <laughs> This has been another of the strange adventures of Nick Carter, Master Detective, which are brought to you regularly at the same time by WOR Mutual. And now Philip Clark, who played Dr. Congo in our story tonight, has a message from our government that I want you all to hear. Go ahead, Phil. A friend of mine asked me the other day, why do we need to save waste paper? And how come the supply of paper is limited? Well, the answer to that is obvious. An army needs men, and lumberjacks, among others, join the army. Fewer trees are cut down. Consequently, there's less paper made because there's less wood pulp available for making it. But that same war that cuts down the available supply of paper demands an ever-increasing quantity of paper for many vital war needs. Paper goes into cartons and containers for food, weapons and equipment needed by the armed forces. Paper is necessary for many of the actual weapons of war, such as incendiary bombs, bomb fins, wingtips, airplane signals, parachute flares, ration containers and ammunition containers. And the American home is the greatest potential source of waste paper. Every kind is needed. Bags, wrapping paper, newspaper, magazines, old containers, and so on. So if you're not already doing so, start today salvaging all the waste paper you possibly can. Then sell it to your junk dealer. Or donate it to some charitable organization. But don't throw away a single scrap of paper. Make it help us win this war. And now, Nick... What about your story for next week? Well, it's about a gang of super crooks who had stolen a very valuable invention and kidnapped the old inventor and his beautiful daughter to hold them as hostages. And even though I accidentally knew in advance what was going to happen, I was too late to stop them due to an unfortunate accident. But Nick more than made up for it the way he went after those crooks. Within 24 hours, he succeeded in capturing the gang and rescuing the professor and his daughter. Yes, Patsy. But it was fast and furious while it lasted. <laughs> Scubby and I were in hot water right up until the end of the chase. What do you call the story, Nick? I've called it The Professor's Secret. Or The Mystery of the Z-Rays. And that's all until next week. So long. So long, everybody. So long to you both, Nick and Patsy. In the strange adventure you have just heard, Nick Carter was impersonated by Lon Clark, Patsy by Helen Choate. The story was written for Nick Carter by Alfred Bester. Original music was played by Lou White. The entire production was under the direction of Jock McGregor. <laughs> Next week at the same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter entitled... The Professor's Secret. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Z-Rays. This story is a copyrighted feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The Return of Nick Carter is produced in the studios of WOR and is broadcast over most of these stations every Saturday evening at 7 o'clock Eastern War Time. And don't forget that the adventures of Nick's adopted son, Chick Carter, are broadcast over most of these stations Mondays through Fridays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern War Time. This is Mutual. Mutual. <laughs>